Hey guys, today we're going to look at lighting for auto flowers. Now, auto flowers are getting more and more popular. Um, in fact, I surveyed uh, you guys, viewers, and um, got a big response, thank you very much, on which plants that you grow. And um, auto flowers account for about 25% of you, or 25% of the grows, so pretty significant. But there's not enough information, in my view, out there about um, auto flower lighting schedules, how to optimize auto flower lighting schedules as opposed to your sort of standard uh, photo period plants. So auto flowers have been around um, for around 20 years now, a uh, little over 20 years. It was the early 2000s when breeders um, interbred the standard um, photo period plants with this variety of cannabis plants, which is Cannabis ruderalis. And they are plants which are grown at very high altitudes um, with uh, poor climate conditions and they are very robust plants um, and they also do not have to uh, have a changed light schedule so they don't have to flip from a longer light schedule into a 12-12 uh, light schedule in order to trigger them to flower. They will, con they will flower independent of the light schedule. So what a lot of people do is they grow them for a long day. Um, typically would light them for about 20 hours a day and you know in the flowering period that means you're getting 20 hours of light as opposed to 12 hours with uh, photo period plants. It means basically you're getting 40 percent more growth potentially per day um, with auto flowers. They tend to be a bit simpler to grow for that reason because you've got a constant light schedule all the way from seedling at 20 hours all the way through to harvest and um, this makes them a little easier because of where they um, where they where they originated from they're much more robust plants so they're more resistant to um, disease uh, more resistant to poor climate conditions so you know if they suffer from a lack of watering or it gets too cold or too hot uh, they're more likely to rebound and continue growing they won't get that um, those high levels of stress that photo periods can and uh, yeah for those reasons they tend to be preferred particularly by um, by inexperienced or starter growers. However, I would argue that you know you look at the uh, how they've settled in the genetics over the last 20 years that they've now become much more stable and um, they've also managed to breed them so that they have a pretty much equivalent THC levels uh, to photo period plants, although there's endless arguments online arguing that they are um, that they're not as good. That the quality is not as good. Uh, personally, I don't believe that to be the case, and I, I often recommend auto flowers to people, particularly when they're starting up, just for the ease of um, of growing them. They do tend to be shorter as well, and that really helps when you're in a smaller environment. You know, you're doing a small grow, so you know they can be higher higher product. You can get a higher productivity as well, not just because of the light schedule, but because that shortens the period of time that they need to mature. So typically with a photo period, you might have, you know, seven or eight week veg time and then a similar flowering time equaling, you know, sort of 12, 16 weeks of, um, of growth. Whereas with auto flowers, you can often um, mature them from seedling all the way up to, to harvest uh, in about 10, 10, 11 weeks. So again, you're getting about a 30% improvement in time, which means you'll be able to get one third more harvests. Uh, a year, if you want to put it that way, compared to uh, photo periods. So highly productive. From a lighting point of view, auto flowers running that longer light schedule don't need to have as high light intensity sort of to maximize the yield you can get from your grow space. So if we look at photo periods first, uh, typically grow light manufacturers recommend 900 micromoles per meter square per second. That is a high power intensity, which will give you a good return in yield from your space. And that, if you multiply it out to daily light integral, that's the total amount of light the plants are absorbing during the day. You multiply that 900 by 60 seconds, then 60 minutes, and then the number of hours, which is 12, and you get about uh, 39 um, DLI, that's moles per day DLI. And uh, you know that's quite a high light intensity. From an auto flower point of view, to hit the same DLI of 40 moles, um, you only need an, a power intensity of around 550 micromoles per meter square per second. The plants can only absorb so much light during the day and so you need less light intensity with a longer light schedule. 
And because of this, and you know the difficulty in getting properly specified uh, lights for auto flowering plants, I've set up a new collection on um, the Migro website for auto flowering plants, and it lists all our lights with the specific uh, application to auto flowers in terms of what um, what area they cover and uh, what your you know your your total light intensity they'll receive during that 20 hour day there's a link below to that collection please check it out um a lot of the lights are for a new range as well just out so uh please check them out I'd be delighted if you could give us some feedback on them and uh yeah you know there's a, as i said with auto flowers there's a lot of people put them down um in my your own personal view that's not justified they can grow you can grow really good weed um using uh auto flowers um you know good potency good quality all that stuff so if you are one that 25 percent i'm fully on your side i can see why you do it and uh, i would do the same myself